So welcome to Technodad Life and my name is Jeff and so today we're going to be looking at the Omada series and how to control it. So basically they have software, hardware, cloud control, and even local control. We're going to define each one of those and find out which one is right for you. For full disclosure, TP-Link did send me some equipment for this review. Uh, they did not pay me or ask to see this video before I published it. So the first thing we're going to look at is local control. Local control is just when you directly access the hardware and you access the management software on the hardware. And so this is great if you're a home user and you just have one or two items, it's easy to manage, but not so good for a business situation. So let's take a look at the software when we go into local control. So what we're going to access is this Jetstream 8 port uh, switch. And so how we're gonna do that is we're going to go to our router. We're going to look up our IP address, type in that IP address, and then access the information, and then log in to the router from the web page. So once we get to that web page, then we type in admin admin, and then log in. And that takes us to router level functionality. It has the same options as most uh, self-managed routers. So next on the list is hardware controllers. And so hardware controllers, uh, they have two of them. This is the OC200. And so this is capable of controlling 100 devices. It can connect to the internet. Uh, it's designed for small to medium businesses. Uh, you do have to pay for it. It's about $100. And we can see currently it is $100. So basically there's three ways that you can use this. You can directly access the controller. You can connect it to the cloud portal so you can connect to it anywhere. And then you can also connect to this in, with the mobile app either locally or through the cloud. A third option, if you don't wanna use their cloud, you can use something like um, WireGuard. You set it up on a server so you can access your local internet and do it that way. The OC300 is slightly bigger and can do up to 500 devices, but otherwise has the exact same features. So let's take a look at the management software for this. And we can see here logging in fails uh, when we use Google Chrome. We actually have to use a different browser because of the pr privacy settings on Google Chrome. So we're going to use Safari. So this is the setup screen and then we can click let's get started. We set our time zone and our location and then click next. We're going to skip our devices for right now, skip our WAN settings. So we can set up all our Wi-Fi information right when we're setting up this device and it will go on our different access points. Next we set up our administrative information our passwords. And so here we have the option to actually connect it to the cloud service or not. So if you're privacy oriented and you don't trust their cloud, then uh, just don't do that right now. Like I said before, you can use uh, WireGuard on your network to access this information that way. Or if you don't want, then you would set up a TP link account here and then you could directly use it in the app and access it that way. So for right now, we're not going to set up a TP-Link account. And then click next, and then it shows you all your information. And then we click finish, log back into our account. Here it's giving us an overview of the system. And now we can set up our devices. If we go over to devices, it has our switch and our access point. If we click on a device, we can see its information over on this side. And we scroll down a little bit, we can click adopt and then it will adopt it into this particular device. Or actually what I should say is controller. So basically, if once you adopt something in a particular controller, either hardware, software, then it is locked to that controller. So if you want to uh, redo things or you want to switch it or you want to change something, 
then you actually have to reset the device to unlock it from that particular controller. And so for right now, we're not going to adopt anything because we're going to show you basically three different ways of doing this. So if we look through all the menus here, uh, we'll start on the dashboard here. And once we add our devices, then we'll be able to see them all here and it will give us information about those. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll add a device and so we'll add in the Wi-Fi access point. Click Adopt. This will just take a few minutes to adopt successfully. So now it's connected successfully and so now if we go back to the dashboard we can see we have one device added in one country and we have one client connected to the wireless access. We go to statistics We've just been connected for about 30 seconds, so nothing is showing up yet, but this is where the charts will be. It has a topology feature. I've just done the access point. Uh, when I do the switch, that will also show up here. Uh, the switch takes longer to reset, so I'm just doing the access point on here. Uh, you can also do maps. On the mapping feature, you can add devices. You simply click on it and drag it over to where you want it. And then you can, let's see, there we go. Click on it, show the location. And so when you do that, the lights start flashing. You can lock it and you can see the information about that device. There's our client list, our insight list, log files, no logs, our admin, and then our settings. So we can also access the same information through the Omada app. And so since I have a M1 MacBook Air, we can do uh, apps on here. So we'll show you that. So we have the Omada app here. There's our controller. We click on that. Then we log in. Once we log in here, we get the same information that we get on the local app when we log in, just more in a uh, more compact for your phone or for your tablet device. We can see our devices. Again, this one is not connected. Our clients and our settings. And so on here right now we have cloud access off. So what that means is when we use this app, it will only work on our local network until we create a cloud account. Or if we set up a virtual network like using TailScale or WireGuard. And when we go to the software controller, then you can see it's pretty easy to set up tail scale so then we can log into our server and access this information there. Okay so the next category we have up is the software controller and so whereas the hardware controller the OC200 was 100 devices and the OC300 was 500 devices the software controller actually controls up to 1500 devices. Uh, you deploy it on your own server it can be either uh, intranet or your local private cloud. Uh, it's for medium or large networks. Uh, pricing model is free. You don't have to actually uh, buy anything. You can just download the software uh, and just put it on your server so there's no hardware costs. Uh, you can still add cloud access just like the two hardware controllers. Uh, if you want to not use the um, Omada Cloud, then you can use something like TailScale on your server to access the Omada software. So, uh, and you can do that either locally through the app or through the cloud standard or through TailScale. So let's take a look at the app. So we want to download the Omada software controller, uh, whatever version is the latest at this time, it's version 5. They have it for Windows, and then also down below we see it's also for Ubuntu, Debian, and CentOS. Once we've downloaded and installed that, we double click on the icon, this app opens up, and then we click Launch. It opens the software, it looks 
pretty much exactly the same as the one for the hardware controllers. Uh, some differences, the main difference I found was the maps actually here is labeled as beta. Otherwise, adding devices is exactly the same, and you just go from there. So our final category is a cloud-based controller, and so uh, this has an unlimited amount of devices that you can add. Uh, it's just login and use. Um, it's for medium or large multi-site networks. Uh, there is a device licensing fee if you're uh, wary of that. Uh, but you have cloud access, automatic channel selection, and uh, zero touch provisioning. And like I said before, you can add the cloud access to both the software and hardware controllers we've already gone over. So let's look at cloud access. First thing we would do is log into the Omana cloud. And when you first see this, this page would be completely empty. You would click Add Controller. And you can add our hardware or software controller. To enable the cloud-based controller, you have to buy a license, uh, which you would do through either TP-Link or a registered provider. And then basically it would show up in this area and you would use it the exact same way as any other controller. To go to that controller, you would click Launch. And that will take you to the controllers page. So now with the cloud control, even if you have hardware or a software controller over a cloud-based controller, you can still access those devices or those controllers from anywhere using your TP-Link cloud address for free. It's only when you use the cloud-based controller uh, that you would actually pay. And I would think for most businesses, the simple cloud-based controller where it just has the controllers listed out will work okay. The exception will be if you want automatic channel selection or zero touch provisioning. So that doesn't happen on this. You would have to copy and paste for your controllers here. So that being said, whatever one you pick, they all work exactly the same. It's just going to be your price point and the hardware that you have already. Uh, so either the local just device control, if you just have one or two devices, hardware controllers, the either the OC200, which is 100 device, or the OC300, which is 500 devices. Software controller, if you want your controller on your server, then that would be 1500 devices. And then finally, the cloud controller, which you have to pay a fee for, a license fee for, which can cover an unlimited amount of devices. That's it for today. And if you have any questions or comments or something you'd like covered, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. Well, you see you next time. Bye-bye.